Welcome back to Invested, I'm Lockie and today we'll look at PayPal stock. Over the past five years, the stock has produced outstanding returns, rising from a price of roughly $40 in 2016, all the way up to 225 at present, rising almost 463% over the past five years. Also, this strong performance is complemented by minimal downturns, uh, with a small downturn in 2018 of about 12%, and of course, a COVID-related downturn of around 29%. But aside from that, the stock's been pretty, pretty strong. Despite the consistent performance of the stock, over the past year, it hasn't performed terribly well. Year to date, the stock is down about 3% and has fallen almost 27% from its high in late July. So today, I'm going to be breaking down the business for you, focusing on all the key factors. It's performance, financial strength, profitability, growth, and management. They give you a current valuation and price target for the stock going forward, telling you if PayPal is a buy, sell, or hold at this time. If you enjoy this type of content, please drop us a like, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. So opening up our screen here, we're going to start off by assessing the financial strength of PayPal. When assessing the financial strength of a company, of course, there's one key metric we focus on, and that metric is cash to debt. In PayPal's case, their cash to debt ratio is fairly good, but not outstanding. Their cash to debt ratio is 0.64, um, indicating that for every dollar of debt the business has on hand, they have 64 cents to meet that debt. Once more, this isn't an outstanding financial position to be in. Uh, it means in the short term, PayPal can't meet all the current debt with their cash on hand. Um, however, once you take into account PayPal's additional cash flows um, and the growth in the cash coming into the business, this shouldn't prove too much of an issue for the business going forward. As an investor, I'm comfortable with that position of 0.64 uh, because I know PayPal's additional cash flows in the future uh, will meet their debt obligations. And as the business continues to grow and grow and grow, um, that cash position will slowly increase and improve. So that lack of cash at present uh, isn't of any great concern to me as an investor. Moving on to the profitability of PayPal. Uh, when assessing the profitability of a company, there's really two key things we focus on. Number one is the margins of the business, uh, and number two is the returns on equity and returns on assets the business produces. Uh, and in PayPal's case, you can see the operating margins and net margins are fairly healthy. You can see operating margins of 17% uh, and net margins of around 20%. Although those margins are somewhat underwhelming uh, for a business in the fintech space, traditionally fintechs have the highest of margins. Uh, you look at a company like Visa or MasterCard, they have margins around 60, 50%, uh, while PayPal's are only around 20%. So comparatively speaking, these margins aren't too impressive uh, when you think about the rest of the industry and what they're producing. Uh, however, for a business that's more in its growth phase rather than its maturity, uh, margins of around 20% are fairly healthy. And again, not ideal, uh, but nor of great concern to me as an investor assessing this business. Operating margins of 17 and net margins of 20 uh, are fine for the time being. What I'd like to see is these improving over time. And as the business grows and grows and grows, so too would I like to see margin improvement. Uh, if PayPal could go on to achieve margins of 30 to 40%, uh, it would be a far more attractive investment prospect. Moving on to returns on equity and returns on assets. Uh, traditionally, when assessing a business, we look for returns on equity and returns on assets uh, around that 20% range. That's what we look for in a wonderful business. Returns on equity for PayPal exceed that range, 25.23. Uh, uh, which is ideal and it shows they're making a decent return on equity for their shareholders. However, the returns on assets are not the same case. Returns on assets for PayPal is only 7.05, uh, far below that 20% threshold we like to aim for when assessing a business to buy. Again, this could be indicative of PayPal attempting to grow uh, and thus not exuding their full profitability as an organization, but still this seems fairly low comparatively speaking uh, to other major players in the fintech space. However, the returns on equity uh, is healthy. I like to see that when assessing the business. So overall, on a profitability basis, uh, PayPal's performance is decent, not ideal. Uh, the margins of 17% and 20% are okay, but still comparatively speaking, low compared to other players in the financial space. Returns on equity is decent, or returns on assets uh, is slightly underwhelming. Moving down to key valuation metrics here. Um, again, when assessing a business, there's a lot of ratios we can use to assess its performance. Uh, you can look at PB ratio, PS ratio, forward PE. Uh, but when assessing a business using these simple type of metrics, there's really only one I focus on, and that's the PE ratio. And currently the PE ratio of PayPal is 55.07, indicating a high degree of growth for the company priced in going forward. Any PE in excess of 20 or so indicates that the market is pricing in a high degree of growth for the business. Um, and with a PE of 55 or so, uh, this indicates that investors believe, and the market believes, uh, that PayPal is going to grow at a fairly quick rate going forward, around 30%, 35% or so. Um, but we'll get into a more detailed valuation later on, and we'll run a full DCF analysis, so keep watching for that. If we move on down here to some more key valuation metrics, um, you can see revenue to net income. Back in 2012, revenue was about 5,600, a net income of 770. Um, and now in 2020, it's grown exponentially to 21,000 revenue uh, and 4,200 net income. So decent growth over that period. 
um, and also indicative of those around 20% margins we talked about earlier. Looking at cash to debt now, you can see the financial structure uh, of PayPal's cash to debt ratio has changed over time. Uh, back in 2013 and 14, they were employing debt in their operations to finance growth going forward. Um, and then they stopped employing debt in 2015 and 16, uh, and then began to re-employ more debt starting in 2017. And now in 2020, 21, uh, they have more debt on the balance sheet than ever, uh, but of course, more cash on hand to meet that. This is not a positive nor a negative for PayPal, uh, just more a reflection of the, the financial structure and how they employ debt going forward. What I would like to see, however, is perhaps more consistency uh, with the employment of debt in their operations. You look back at the, the financial past of some of the most well-known businesses, companies like Microsoft, Apple, initially they had no debt, uh, and then began to employ more and more over time. However, in PayPal's case, they've kind of gone back and forward, back and forward, uh, employing debt and then not employing it. Uh, I'd like to see a more consistent strategy going forward. And you can see that between 2017 and 2020, you can see they're slowly growing their debt load whilst improving their cash balance at the same time. That's great to see. Uh, and going forward, I'd like to see that continue. Coming down here, you can see returns on equity. Again, PayPal doesn't have outstanding returns on equity. Uh, they're kind of within that five to, to 14 type range, uh, dropping down as low as one in 2016. Uh, but this is, again, this is indicative of a business that's growing. Um, and as the business grows into maturity, hopefully these returns on equity will improve. And additionally, hopefully those returns on assets that were as low as about 7% uh, will again rise going forward. Again, that's a big maybe. Uh, PayPal needs to continue to execute on their strategy and grow as a business uh, for that to come into fruition. Moving down to the Peter Lynch chart, you can see there's not a whole lot of data here for PayPal. Um, however, we can get a picture of kind of how the business has been priced over time. You can see between 2017 and 2020, barring the, the COVID-19 period, uh, the business was pretty accurately priced. Uh, the price to earnings line and the price line were pretty much intertwined, uh, signaling that the business was fairly priced on an earnings basis. Um, but now, as time has gone on, the price line and the earnings line have deviated slightly, uh, indicating that investors are pricing in a greater deal of growth for the business. If we take a more detailed look at PayPal's margins, uh, you can see margins have been on a fairly steady decline uh, from 2014. You can see back in 2014, gross margins were 52.56%, um, and now they've declined all the way down to 48.43% with a low of 43.95 uh, in 2020. These margins are very uncharacteristic of a fintech. Uh, when you think about a business like Visa or MasterCard, um, they have gross margins of around 100%. Uh, and comparatively speaking, this is fairly low. I do realize that the businesses are different um, and PayPal doesn't have the same economic characteristics as a Visa or MasterCard, uh, but still uh, as a business that is supposedly competing with those two players in the fintech space, um, these margins need to see, these gross margins need to see significant improvement um, to compete on a profitability basis with those two larger players. Once more, operating margins have been pretty sporadic for the company, uh, jumping between 13 and 15, 13 and 16. So deviations of about 2% annually uh, between 2014 and 2021. Uh, now at their high of 17.23%. Uh, but of course, you look at the cyclicality going on here. Uh, operating margins have gone up and down, up and down. Hopefully PayPal's operating margins can become more consistent in the future. Um, and grow at a more steady rate rather than this kind of up and down trend they've been having. Uh, net margins, however, have been pretty consistent, uh, rising from 5% in 2014 to around 12% in 2015 and then remaining consistent through to 2020 uh, before rising again to around that 20% figure we discussed earlier. So if we were to accurately value PayPal as a business, uh, we'd have to run something called a DCF analysis, a discounted cash flow analysis. Uh, as Warren Buffett always says, the value of any business is the cash that will return to its shareholders between now and judgment day. And that's what a DCF calculation tells us. We're gonna run a DCF on both an earnings per share and a free cash flow basis uh, to give you an idea of how much the business is earning and then how much of those earnings is translating to free cash flow the business can actually use to finance its operations going forward. Look at earnings per share growth over the past five, 10 and one year period. Of course, 10 year isn't applicable because uh, the company went public fairly recently. So we've only got five year and one year period figures to work off. Um, over a five year period, it's grown at about 26.5% and one year, the pandemic related jump of 88.10%. So if we were to input that 26, 27% figure uh, into our growth assumptions and we input that into our calculation, so we use a 20% growth rate on an earnings basis uh, and then a discount rate of 8%. Discount rate of 8%, of course, 8% is the long run return of the stock market um, and thus a suitable rate at which to discount our cash flows. So you can see with a growth rate of 27%, discount rate of 8%, then the earnings per share of 4.10 uh, as seen over here on a, on a normalized basis, you can see we come out to a price target of 280 and 58 cents, or about a 20% increase, indicating that PayPal may be trading at as much as a 20% discount to its intrinsic value. Um, but that's an earnings per share basis. Let's have a look at a free cash flow calculation to see how much of those earnings are actually translating to free cash flow for the business, uh, and then give you a second price target. So on a free cash flow basis, again, 
course, we don't have the 10-year figures. Uh, but on a five-year basis, it's been growing about 22.5%. And a one-year basis, underwhelming growth of about 10.7%. That indicates less free cash flow came down to the business uh, and more of it was being used to finance operations as PayPal rapidly grew during the pandemic. Once more, the 12-year trailing figure seems a bit low. It's at 4.03, so we could bump that up to 4.2, but we'll keep it at 4.03 uh, just for accuracy in this, this case. And then we use a free cash flow growth figure of, let's say, about 25%, because as the business grows and matures, um, that cash flow growth will increase and more of those earnings will translate down to free cash flow in the future. So using a growth rate of about 25%, discount rate of 8% as discussed before, uh, and then the free cash flow of about $4 per share, we come up to a price target of $240, um, or about a 6% increase in the current price of, of PayPal stock. So making the calculation on a free cash flow basis, uh, we can see it's a slightly lower price target compared to our earnings per share target uh, of 280. Why is that? Well, I would argue that PayPal is in a growth phase. Um, less of their earnings are translating to free cash flow, uh, and thus, earnings per share is probably a better representation of the current value of the stock rather than free cash flow. As the business matures um, and free cash flow becomes the greatest part of their operations, uh, it's probably better to value it on a free cash flow basis. When you're valuing a mature business, free cash flow often gives you a better price target. Um, but when it comes to these fast growing companies, the market tends to value them based on earnings per share uh, rather than current free cash flow. So, with that in mind, my price target for PayPal uh, would be around 280 and 58 cents, or about 20% upside to what the stock is currently trading at. If you were a bit more bullish, uh, if you thought this digital transformation in payments will continue at an exponentially higher and higher rate, um, you could put in a higher growth figure. You could put in a growth figure around 30%, uh, and then that will give you upside of about 35% of the stock. PayPal benefits from a whole lot of powerful secular trends. Um, transition to digital payments away from cash uh, is the main one. If you believe that will continue to drive exponential growth going forward, um, a higher growth rate like that I don't think is unreasonable, um, and a price tag of around 344 uh, is an outlandish. Uh, but for me, I'm a little more conservative. I think the pandemic related growth is probably going to cut off a bit going forward. And you can see that in the stock, it's declined about 27% from its high. Um, and so thus, my price target will be around 280, indicating 20% upside. But once more, the stock is a fantastic long term hold um, as that digital transformation and move away from cash continues. So that was my brief yet somewhat detailed analysis of PayPal stock. Growth with decent financial strength, um, somewhat underwhelming profitability and net margins. Uh, but understandable given that the business is very much in a growth phase rather than maturity. Based on a DCF analysis, the business is trading slightly below its intrinsic value. Uh, but again, that hinges on a whole lot of growth assumptions. We assume that that pandemic related growth may cut off a bit, but the business will continue to grow going forward. If you make the assumption uh, that this exponential pandemic growth will continue, uh, then of course you can get a much higher price target. We had a price target around 344. Uh, so if you're bullish on the stock, you could make a play for that. However, for me, I think earnings will normalize going forward. And thus the stock is trading just below its intrinsic value. If you enjoyed this video, if it taught you more about the investment you're thinking about making, uh, drop us a like below, hit subscribe if you haven't already, comment down below if there's another stock you want me to talk about in the next video, um, and I'll see you in the next one.